The ongoing political debate over whether the CIA lies got a new player today in the form of a federal judge, and no points for guessing which side he comes down on. Our fourth story tonight began when Republicans claim House Speaker Nancy Pelosi must have known about U.S. waterboarding back in 2002 because the CIA never lies and would have told her. In documents unsealed today, a federal judge found that the CIA committed fraud in an unrelated case involving the exact same guy who led the CIA in 2002. George Tenet. U.S. District Judge Royce Lamberth wrote that he is considering sanctioning Tenet and others at the agency because the CIA got a case against one of its officials dropped by arguing that the official was a covert op that never told the judge after they lifted his cover. Judge Lamberth also said current CIA Director Leon Panetta has given conflicting accounts of what should be revealed in the case, which involves an American citizen, a DEA agent, who claims he was wiretapped by the CIA overseas back in 93. All of this unfolding as a House committee announced it will investigate why the CIA, reportedly at the bidding of Vice President Cheney, did not brief congressional leaders on a plan the CIA was pursuing to train and deploy hit squads to hunt al-Qaeda. In Thursday's Washington Post, Obama's Director of National Intelligence, Dennis Blair, said he thinks the CIA had legal leeway not to tell Congress. We learned today that on Friday, Intelligence Committee Senator Russ Feingold shot Blair a letter disputing his interpretation of the law and asking him to back it up. Let's bring in Scott Horton, the lawyer who specializes in the law of armed conflict and human rights and also serves as contributing editor at Harper's Magazine. Scott, thanks for joining us tonight. Great to be with you, David. Intelligence Director Blair essentially said he thinks the CIA should brief Congress as thoroughly as possible, but that the law did permit the CIA to make a judgment call and not tell Congress about this hit squad plan codenamed Box Top. Why would Senator Feingold take such exception? Well, I think he's picked the right issue. I mean, he's focusing in on Congress's right to know, at least the Gang of Eight's right to know about these programs. Uh, and Leon Panetta rushed to Capitol Hill, gave a briefing, uh, seems to feel he was obligated to do so. And then we had Blair walk that back very quickly. And I think uh, Russ Feingold is uh, pushing Congress's right to know. He's pushing that issue, and he wants to know exactly where the Obama White House stands on it. Well, in addition to, to pushing to try to find out where the White House stands, what eventually do you think Senator Feingold hopes to accomplish? Well, I, I think it's establishing policy, but I think we, we go back here and we can look uh, and say over the last uh, eight years, particularly between 2002 and 2007, um, congressional oversight of the intelligence community reached a low point. Uh, it was really virtually ineffective. And I think he and, uh, and I think his chair uh, and, and the uh, committee on the House side are pushing uh, these boundaries back now. They want to assert congressional oversight. Uh, and this is a very effective tool for them to use to that end. And as they uh, push back, the House Intelligence Committee is now investigating the decision not to brief Congress. So what happens if it turns out, as CIA Director Panetta reportedly said, that former Vice President Cheney told the CIA to keep Congress in the dark? Should Mr. Cheney care? Well, I think that's a major issue, and we'd have to develop many more facts to know what his exposure is here. But I would doubt that his exposure is of the level that we see with the torture issue, for instance, or uh, his role in the outing of uh, Valerie Plame, a covert uh, CIA agent. In this case, uh, it's very, very likely that uh, Cheney and Addington, who were very, very deep in this program, uh, secured the appropriate paperwork. They got national intelligence findings. They got President Bush to sign off, and that will be perfect cover for him uh, and will address any potential criminal exposure he would have. But doesn't that then cry out for what they did in the Valerie Plame case, and that is appoint a special prosecutor? I mean, never mind what Congress does with its committees that are investigating. Isn't there a burden on Eric Holder, the attorney general, to go ahead and name a special prosecutor to review some of those issues? Well, exactly. I think that's one of the reasons we see Blair uh, suggesting that there was no need to brief here. There, there's great concern in the intelligence community now about the prospect of more intrusion, particularly a special prosecutor. Uh, there's one already uh, acting, looking at the destruction uh, of tapes uh, of uh, torture sessions that went on. Uh, there's a likelihood, as Newsweek uh, and I and others have reported, uh, of a second special prosecutor being appointed. And this is a, a third opportunity for uh, a special prosecutor. The intelligence community wants to shut that down. Uh, but I think Congress's concern really would not, in the end of the day, be 
fully served by a special prosecutor. Congress probably wouldn't learn everything the, uh, the Justice Department investigator learns, uh, and I think it's unlikely to lead to criminal prosecutions, unlike some of these other matters. Finally, with the, uh, the court case we begin with, a federal judge saying that the CIA misled his court in order to protect one of its officials from a lawsuit by letting the court think the official still needed immunity, essentially for national security reasons. Um, any sign of a theme here? <laughs> well, the CIA uh, uses uh, stealth and deceit as tools. It has to use them uh, in the nation's interest. Uh, the problem arises when those tools are used with respect to our own government, uh, when they're used on a court, when they're used on Congress, uh, or even the White House. Uh, in this case, uh, you know, we've seen a number of instances, uh, Judge Brinkema, for instance, being uh, misled ab about the tapes that were made. Uh, there are a number of very questionable allegations that were made by the CIA uh, in two lawsuits dealing with uh, the renditions case. So we're really seeing a pattern emerging, and I think uh, even though I know some of the people who are involved here, and I consider them to be honest and honorable people, I think they're going to have a hard time uh, explaining what went on. Scott Horton, a national security lawyer and contributing editor at Harper's Magazine. And Scott, thanks for coming on. Great to be with you.